What's up, Kong gang? Welcome back to statics. So we got this problem. It's an equilibrium problem. So all of our forces are in equilibrium, which means there's no movement, no acceleration happening. And we're getting these four forces. So it wants us to find what force one and force two are equal to, given that our theta is equal to 60 degrees. So the image is on here somewhere. I just converted it into a force body diagram, basically. It already is pretty similar to that. So when we have these problems, uh, how do we solve them, right? How are we gonna do that? Well. What's our status of equilibrium, right? When we're at equilibrium, what do we know about that? Well, we know that force, the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. That means that the forces pushing this way on the object are pushing equally back this way on the object. So however much these forces are pushing to the right, they're getting pushed to the left at an equal amount so that there's no uh, force total, basically. And same thing for the y direction. Some of the forces in the y direction is equal to zero. If it had a greater force than zero, it would be moving up or down. So that's why the sum of the forces are equal to zero, and that's how we know that. But what are these equal to, right? We have to actually solve a math problem to find what these numerically are. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know that some of the forces in the x direction are equal to zero, but we actually have to add them up now. So let's start with, uh, let's start with just top left, right? Let's go. Okay, so we have five kilonewtons on this one. So its force is 5,000, but we're finding it just in the x direction. So how are we gonna do that? Well, we have this triangle here, right? So let's go ahead and complete it. So this is force y, this is force x. If we wanna find force x, we're gonna have to use a cosine. Cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So we know theta is 30 degrees, so we can say cosine of theta, cosine of 30, Am I in the light? Not quite yet. So cosine of 30 is equal to adjacent force in the x direction over hypotenuse, which we know is 5 kilonewtons, so 5,000. So if we want to find what that equal to, if we multiply the 5,000 over by the cosine 30, we just get force in the x direction. So down here, 5,000 cosine of 30 is what this vector does pointing in the x direction. But we have to be careful, it's pointing negative x. This is positive x, this is negative x, so we need to put a negative sign out front. Okay, that's our first one. Let's go to our next one, seven kilonewtons. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Uh, 7,000, but instead of using sines and cosines, we can relate to this little triangle that it has in there. We know that the triangle is a three, four, five triangle. So using ratios, we're trying to find the x over the hypotenuse, right? So we know that 7,000, or we know that the, the x component, like if we're expanding this out, this triangle is the same as this triangle. So we know that the hypotenuse on this one is five and that the x is four. So if we're trying to do that for the 7,000, we take the 7,000 and multiply it by four over five. This gives you exactly how long this distance is, right? This force in the x direction. So there you go, we got that one. But we have to be careful too. This is also a negative. Why? It's because it's pushing in the negative x direction. So yeah, there we go. Good job on that one. So now we gotta go over here, right? Let's get started on this. So force two, same thing. So it's gonna be plus force two, but then we're trying to do just the x direction. So let's create our triangle again. Force in the x direction. It's gonna be not, let me try to expand this triangle out. That triangle is gonna be force two. This is force x, and this is theta, right? Force x because it's pushing in the x direction. This time we're given a different theta. If you use cosine, you would get this sign, right? Cosine is the adjacent over hypotenuse, so you'd be finding this one. This time we have to use sine because sine is uh, it's, um, opposite over hypotenuse. So this time we're gonna use sine 70 degrees. Okay, that's our that one. And that one's pushing in the positive x direction, so the plus sign makes sense. And here, we're gonna go to say plus force one and then this time, it's gonna be cosine, right? We make our triangle, force of x. It's gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent force of x is gonna be cosine. So force one, cosine. And we know what our theta is. Our theta is 60. So what do we have here? We have this big equation, right? Zero is equal to that, 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 and that. And we have two unknowns. We have force one is unknown, and we have force two is unknown. How do we do that? If you have one equation and two unknowns, you can't find them because there could be many solutions. But if you have two equations and two unknowns, then you have a system of equations, 
and you can find the answers. So we need one more equation to be able to find force one and force two. What equation are we gonna use for that? Well, we're gonna sign some of the forces in the y direction. So basically we're gonna do all this again, but instead finding the forces in the y direction. So let's start with this one here, right? So forces, some of the forces in the y, we know it's equal to zero, but it's gonna be equal to negative, or it's gonna be 5,000 here, but instead it's gonna be sine of y, sine of 30 degrees. Let me make another one of these again. Sine of theta, of theta is 30 degrees, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Force in the y direction over hypotenuse, which we know is 5,000. So if we multiply the 5,000 over, 5,000 sine of 30 is equal to this force in the y direction. So that's how we know, right? So this works out, and it's pushing in the positive y direction, so there's no negative sign in front of it. So let's move on to the next one. This next one is pushing in the negative y direction, so we're gonna go ahead and put a negative sign out front, negative 7,000. And then again, we're gonna use um, the ratio we have. We know that the ratio of the vertical y to the uh, hypotenuse is three to five, and because of our similar triangles, we're trying to find this here, force in y. So similarly, it's gonna be force of y divided by five, so it's gonna be 7,000 times three over five. There we go, next one. Force two, okay, so this will be plus force two. And instead of using sine this time, we're gonna find cosine, because cosine is this one here. It's the adjacent, so pushing up. So it's gonna be a positive uh, cosine of 70. And then force one, it's pushing downward, negative. So we get negative force one. And then if we're trying to find the vertical component, which is this side here, because it's parallel to the y, uh, we're gonna find sine because sine is opposite over adjacent, so sine of theta, but we know theta is 60. So right, here we go. Now we have two equations and two unknowns. We can go ahead and solve these. Uh, so this is just gonna be a lot of algebra work now. So if you just needed help getting to this part, feel free to click off or skip to the answer in the later part, or maybe just try doing this algebra work by yourself, but if you still want help, feel free to watch this part. So I'm gonna pull the chair. Okay, so the first part of this question is to find force one, right? So we want to find force one. So if we want to find force one, we're going to want to find, we're going to want to cancel out the force twos. So how do we cancel out the force twos? Well, let's set each equation equal to force two by rearranging this equation. So if we want just force two by itself, let's start with force in the x direction. So we're going to have, we have zero is equal to negative 5,000 cosine 30. So let's go ahead and move that over. So 5,000 cosine of 30. But then we can also move the 7,000 4 over 5 over. You can also go ahead and do all this math right now. You can simplify this, because this is just a number, and this is just a number. So you can actually combine these together before doing this work. But I'm going to go ahead and just move them over, and then do all the work at the end on the calculator. So we're moving this to the other side of the equation by adding it to both sides, 7,000 4 over 5. And then we want to move force one over to the other side because we're trying to get force two by itself. So we're going to subtract force one cosine of 60 from both sides. And then that's just going to be equal to force two sine of 70. So we want force two by itself. So what I'm going to do is divide by sine of 70 from both sides. So then you're going to get one over sine of 70 times all of this. And that will get rid of this sine of 70. So now we have force two by itself. Great. We did it. Sweet, okay, so we wanna do that for the second part now. So we have this equation again, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the 5,000 over, the 7,000 over, and the force one over, just to get force two by itself. So this is gonna be negative 5,000 this time, sine of 30, plus 7,000 times three over five, uh, plus force one sine of 60, is equal to force two cosine of 70. Once again, I just subtracted this over to the zero side, added this to the zero side, added that to the zero side. To get this, then we're gonna divide both sides by cosine of 70, one over cosine of 70. It's gonna get rid of this cosine of 70. So now what we have is two equations in the term, or in terms of force two. So because we know these force twos are gonna be equal to each other, right? They're both force two. We can set this whole equation equal to this whole equation, and that's gonna give us 
uh, one equation with just one unknown in it, and then we can solve, which is perfect. So let's do that. Let's write it out all together. So it's going to be this equation, 1 over sine 70, 5,000 cosine 30, plus 7,000, 4 over 5, uh, minus force 1 cosine of 60, and that's just this part, is equal to the bottom part. 1 over cosine of 70, you get 5,000 sine of 30, I missed a 0, I guess, sine of 30. 7,000, oh, plus 7,000, yeah, okay, I'm confusing myself, 3 over 4, plus F1 sine of 60. Okay, there we go, this is our big equation, with just force 1 as the unknown in it. So we got to simplify this down, so I'm going to do some erasing, just to clear some space up. Oh, maybe I wanted one of these, actually no, I don't need these yet. So these are good, we don't need them anymore, but they're nice to remember how we got here. Okay, so next part, we just have to simplify this. Uh, how did I simplify this? I mean, it's a lot of work to simplify this now. Okay, um, yeah, let's just do that. Okay, let's just start. So, I'm gonna break this up. So I'm gonna bring this part out because we're looking for the force one. So it's gonna look like negative force one, and it's gonna be cosine of 60 over sine of 70. I really recommend you guys try to solve the problem from here on your own because I might just end up confusing you guys more. So feel free to try this part on your own. It's just algebra from here on out. Uh, but I'm gonna show you the answer later. Or feel free to watch how I do it. And then the rest of this is just gonna be a number. So then, yeah, plus one over sine 70, 5,000 cosine of 30 plus 7,000, four over five is equal to, and then I'm gonna bring up the force one part of this, so it's gonna be force one sine of 60 over cosine of 70. And then, of course, plus one over cosine of 70, negative 5,000 sine of 30 plus 7,000, 3 over 5, or 3 over 5. I put a 4 over there. Oops. That's a 5 I need to do. Copy here. Okay, from here, I'm going to subtract this force one over from this force one, and then I'm going to add this, because this is just a big number. This is just a big number if you put it into your calculator. And then this is a number and this is a number. So if I subtract this over, you're going to end up with negative 3.06 force 1 is equal to negative 5,596.95. Then just um, doing some more math work, you're going to get force 1 is equal to 1,830 newtons to three sig figs right there. Okay, so we found force 1, right? That is force 1 right there. Nice, we did it. So now we need to find force 2. And force 2 is going to be the easiest part of this. Because look down here, we have two equations that can find what force 2 is equal to. All we have to do is plug in what we found for force 1 right into one of these equations, and it's going to give us force 2. And a good check step is to plug this into both equations, because if, if you plug this number into both of these equations and you get the same number for force 2, that means you did it right. Like 100% certainty, you got the right answer. So let's do that. So just simply, I am literally going to write this equation out, sine of 70, 5,000, cosine of 30, plus 7,000, 4 over 5, minus force 1, we found, is that, so it's going to be 1830 sine 60 is equal to force 2, and then you're going to find force 2 is equal to 9,600 if you plug it into this equation, you'll get that. If you plug it into this equation, oh wait, hold on, which one did I do? 
Oh, I meant to use cosine. No. I lost track. Cosine. Boom. There you go. So this is a true equation. If you plug it into this, you get the same number. And that's how you know you did a good job. So that's all the problem is, right? Yeah, nice. So that's how you solve this problem. It's a lot of work. More algebra and more logistical thinking. But once you can draw your force body diagram and you get the sign of the cosines and the sines and tangents, it's going to make so much sense to you. And then learn how to do your system of equations. You can solve literally any problem up to like way up in statics. So that's how you solve this kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, good luck on your statics homework, guys. See you later.